Hello, all my Pisces friends. This is Maxine Taylor, and I have your astrological forecast for October. But before I share that with you, I want to share this with you. This is my latest book. It's called Secrets from the Womb, and it's uh, subtitled The Hidden Pact That Runs Your Life. Um, many of you know that I do more than astrology. Uh, my passion is helping people to release their programming so that they can be their true self, which is spirit in an earthbound body. Um, and uh, I noticed that like Groundhog Day, uh, the movie, our stories repeat constantly, different people uh, playing the same, uh, different roles perhaps, um, but it's the same story with the same ending. And that gets very, very old. Um, many people who are very spiritual have these exquisite highs just from meditating or seeing a magnificent sunrise. Um, and then somebody comes along, punches their button, kills their joy, and they're back in their story. And I could not understand why that happened to earthlings. Why does that happen? Well, I got my answer, and it's in this book. Uh, this book contains the simple technique of three steps to transform your life. Now, that's saying a lot. And I, uh, I have not worked with everybody on this planet, of course, obviously. But the people I have worked with with this have written their stories and they're, uh, this is a sample of the people I've worked with and they're sharing their stories with you. It's hard to believe that you could experience uh, for more than just a few minutes, the joy, the peace, the love, the abundance, uh, the beauty, the health that you experience when you are in the present, when you are in the zero point field, in the quantum field. There are many names for it, uh, but it's that is who you are. And so if you are at that point in your spiritual journey, check this out. It's on Amazon. If you would rather not read a book, if you'd rather have a face-to-face -face session with me on Amazon, that's cool. Uh, just go to my website, MaxineTaylor.com, and uh, all the information uh, is there. Another thing that people have been asking me is when I'm going to start another series of uh, astrology classes. I'd like to do that in the next couple of months, but the holiday season is going to be upon us. I'm not sure about astrologically how that will work out. So if you're interested in studying astrology with me, and I say studying very loosely because uh, we have a wonderful time. Uh, it's not hard study. It's just a terrific opening of the mind. Uh, and if you have uh, a desire to practice astrology, I will teach you everything I know. So if that's the case, uh, go to my website, shoot me an email, and we'll talk, okay? Um, I am also doing my mentoring sessions. Uh, when COVID hit, everything stopped, you know. We've been through a lot. Um, and I modified my mentoring sessions, uh, made them easier, more accessible. So if you want to learn astrology face-to-face -face with me, one-on-one, -on -one, go to my website, check out the mentoring session, and um, give me a call. Okay, now, let's talk about you. This is your glorious forecast for October. Let's start with Venus, the pink planet. This is money, 
It is love. It is all the good stuff. It's art. It's beauty. Um, wherever Venus is, that's what you love. It has been in your sixth house. And so if you've had health problems, Venus, love is the greatest antidote. It's the universal antidote. And Venus in your sixth house helps you enjoy your job and heal your body. On the eighth, it will move into your seventh house of partnership. So if you're uh, unattached, I would get out there and see what's out there. If you are attached to somebody, um, let them know in all of your one-on-one -on -one relationships, you're enjoying them and you're loving being with the different people who fill that one-on-one -on -one slot. When they feel your love for them, they love themselves. It's beautiful. Now, let's look over here. The sun, the yellow planet, the giver of life, has been and will continue to be in your eighth house of transformation. The sun, in, in this case, I'm talking about the ego. Um, and so the old you is shedding its old self. And on the 23rd, the sun moves into your ninth house of the higher mind, the big picture. You have your answers and you have the freedom to spread your wings and soar. Wherever the sun is, that's the center of your life. The red planet is Mars. That's wherever that is. That is what is number one. Okay. It's what you'll fight with and fight for. It has been in the eighth house. It um, astrologically is one of the rulers of the eighth house. And so you have probably been ex experiencing uh, anger. Uh, it may relate to joint finances, or it could simply be anger over an emotional or a physical issue with somebody. Um, but there is anger there that will be transformed. On the eighth, Mars moves into that ninth house. <clears throat> and the number one thing is fighting for your principles. When I say fighting, I don't mean, you know, fighting, fighting, taking a stand for your principles. And remember, wherever Mars is, that is number one. Wherever the sun is, that is the center of our life. And so we've got Mars and the sun um, going from the eighth house into the ninth house. When you're finished, when a planet is finished with the eighth house, it, it feels like it's born again and it sees a bigger picture than it ever knew was available to it. Now let's look at Mercury, the blue planet. That's what we think about and talk about. In the seventh house, we think about our partners. We think about the one-on-one -on -one relationship. Mercury is the talker, the communicator, the idea person. On the fourth, it will move into the eighth house. And so you're going to be rethinking lots of things, whether it's how much money you want to share with your uh, loved ones or uh, how you feel about money or your own psychic awareness and ability, that type of thing. And so it's going to stay in the eighth house till the 22nd, when it joins the sun and Mars in the ninth house. And it brings a conscious awareness of a larger picture that is ready for you to take hold of it. It's beautiful. Now, Jupiter... The greater benefit is truth. It's fun. It's joy. And boy, it is money. It uh, Jupiter expands everything. It's in your third house of the conscious mind. So you've got great ideas, but Jupiter is retrograde, which means it's not expressing itself on its highest and best level. Um, it can't. It's retrograde. 
It will go direct in a couple of months and I'll let you know when that occurs. However, write the best novel you know how. Write a blog, communicate your ideas because you've got your ninth house activated and you're taking your ideas and applying them to a larger picture. Now, on the new moon, which is when energy starts growing, and the full moon, when energy comes to a head, we have an eclipse on each one of those lunations. Whenever we have an eclipse, we feel it about a week to two weeks before it occurs. Um, and the effects uh, go on until the next pair of eclipses come along. They usually occur in pairs, but they're at their peak three to four months after they occur. I love eclipses because they propel us forward. So on the new moon, which is October 14th, we have a full, a new, excuse me, we have a solar return, solar eclipse, excuse me, not a solar return. Um, we have an eclipse in 21 degrees of Libra. Find it in your birth chart for the total picture. Okay, so we've got um, the energy start to flow in that eighth house of transformation, magic, and out with the old, in with the new. So this new moon is a solar eclipse and it's on the 14th. Two weeks later, we've got a full moon. And that's when everything comes to a head. It's on the 28th and it's in five degrees of Taurus. Again, check it out in your birth chart and combine it with what I'm saying here because this full moon really opens the door to you expressing yourself. And remember, Jupiter is in that third house too. And Jupiter, the words I use to describe Jupiter are a lot of. So you've got a lot of ideas. You've got a lot of things to say. you got a lot of words. Put them in the blender, as it were, with that ninth house. And you have quite a picture quite a story to tell. So, ah, oh, that is October for you, Pisces. Join me next month when once again, I go through your forecast with you. Till then, may the stars shine brightly on you and yours. Bye for now.